Hello, and welcome back to another uh, on-site episode of the TF Cast. My name is Willis. Hey, Zach here, and the date is March 30th, 2022. And I'm your host, Jacob Bases. Today with us, we have Patty Rusky of Sidetracked here at 420. Uh, Park Lane. Park Lane. Um, yeah, and this is a new uh, retail space and uh, kind of like a community art space. Patty, uh, just tell us a little bit about the space and how you got started here and what's going on on Park Lane. Sure. So I call it sidetracked because my whole idea is that people can get a little sidetracked. You know, if you're on vacation and you get a little sidetracked, then you think that's a good vacation, right? <laughs> or if you're, um, you know, doing your day-to-day work in your house or whatever and you get sidetracked, it's usually because you're interested in something. So, and then within the space, so it's sidetracked itself as a retail space where I try to have affordable art and affordable poetry and put uh, different artists work in here. I can sign work. And then uh, in the back of the space is the art for all space and it's an open studio space and that's where we're sitting now. And so um, uh, in this space, people can come in and use this space for free and they can use any of the products here and all the products have been donated by various Mankatoans, and um, uh, the idea is they can come in and, and use the space, try new things. Um, sometimes artists have a really hard time affording product, um, and they might not want to try new new ventures, like maybe they're a watercolor person and they want to try, I don't know, weaving or uh, doing collage or something different. So that's the idea. It's just an open studio space and, and not just artists, anyone who wants to use this space. You don't have to call yourself an artist. Mm-hmm. And there, there certainly is like a lot of uh, things back here. I was a little bit shocked when I first came in because there's just a lot of I, I couldn't even begin, like, uh, what kind of different uh, mediums are back here, just to give it, like, a yeah. scatter blast on it? I will. You know, there's everything from uh, watercolor, acrylics, pastel, oil pastel, I mean, collage items, and then also um, in the sewing arena, like, I have a sewing machine, there's crochet, needlework, yarn, you could go over to... Um, doing wood. There's different woodworking stuff behind me. And then over on the, on the wall behind me is, um, I have a lot of mat boards and a lot of frames. So artists who have pieces they want to frame can come in here and actually frame their work. Hmm. So, uh, so how did you come to this? Did you, mm-hmm. uh, how did you come to wanting to have this space sure. exist? Sure. Um, I've been thinking about it for several years. Um, but to start way back when I started out as an artist, I was actually in my early thirties. Um, I didn't go to school for art and I, I didn't, um, I didn't know even what was out in the world really, uh, as far as, um, that went. So, um, and, uh, I was working at a coffee house here in town and I, um, it was talked to several of the art professors up on campus and uh, one of them invited me to to jump in and come up to a class and just sit in and see if I wanted to do some work. So I did. And then that led me to creating a lot of work over the years and having shows and framing my work and um, getting grant opportunities and so on. So that's the short version. But then I went into these last few years. Seriously, I, I've been in through a little bit of life changes in the last few years, along with everybody with COVID and other things. But um And I decided I really wanted to open up a shop to uh, provide people with a space if they couldn't afford the work and if they couldn't afford the product to be able to come in and actually see what's out there. Because I went through a time about five years ago, my spouse passed. And so um, that was a hard time for me, of course. And as an artist, I wrote poetry and I created work that I then shown, you know, around town a little bit. And then we went right into COVID. You know, there was a couple of years, the grief process, then you go into COVID. So I've been thinking about this and how um, without the creative side of me, it would everything would have been a lot harder. And as we know, people really did a lot more work at home during COVID. And therefore, they sometimes were creating more things. And so I really think as um, as creative people, it gives you balance. I mean, I could go on and on. There's all sorts of studies that show how healthy it is to create um, something, whether it's, you know, making a good meal or being in the garden or, you know, drawing or writing or so that that's kind of how I got into it. I, I really wanted to provide the space. And then the retail space helps me afford kind of the art for all space. So sure. Um, talk a little bit about the retail space. Sure. Uh, you know, what's in there and sure. 
Well, what Jacob likes is the vegan chocolate. Hey, uh, hey, 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 so, so, so I got a lot of really cool items. So I have, you know, different um, watercolor mediums and uh, canvases and pens and pencils and, and, you know, some sustainable notebooks and journals and stuff. But it seems to me that, that a lot of people like the chocolate and the stickers. <laughs> so so if, I were, if I opened a chocolate and sticker store, then I'd be set. But, uh, and and uh, most of the products, uh, the majority of the products, I tried to go with small companies. Um, I tried to go with women-owned, BIPOC folks. I tried to go with um, uh, earth-friendly, environmentally you know, conscious businesses. Um, and, and then also the idea back here is this is all in a sense recycled product that people are donating. So, um, so that's what I hope I'm representing here. Yeah. I also noticed that there was like quite a few like local names that I just immediately Good. recognized who some, some of the things I didn't even, I didn't even know that they had, you know, written books or things like that. So I thought that was fairly interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe could you give like a little insight into um, like uh, your your time in Mankato? You've been here for for Long quite time. some time, yeah. and you've uh, you've done some previous work owning businesses and stuff like sure. that. Just give us a little rundown on that. Sure, I came in uh, 1990 um, with my spouse at the time. She was going to go to the women's studies program. Uh, up at MSU. So I moved up here just with her and I had finished my master's and I did a few jobs around town, but I realized that um, I didn't know anybody and I wanted to get out there and meet people and do a job that I felt um, I, that I believed in, I guess. You know, I did a little bit in, not in the corporate world, but in organizations and such. So uh, in 92, I decided to open the Coffee Hag, which is a coffee house here in town, which is still doing really good work. And um, uh, part of it was that I wanted to support artists and musicians. And um, also for myself, I didn't want to just go hang out at a bar all the time. I wanted to be able to go to work and, you know, still meet people and have some interesting things happening. So, so I opened that up and that um, I was doing, you know, like I said, everything I believed in. And then that led me to then becoming an artist myself um, somewhere during that time. And, and, um, so that so I did that work for about thirteen years, and then sold the business and had a child and um, raised her, and and also was along the side was doing my work. And um, I've gotten several Prairie Lakes grants, State Arts Board grants, um, and continue. I hope continue to to keep producing work. And during COVID, I had um, got a State Arts Board grant where I could make uh, smaller pieces of my work. I could copy them. Um, and so uh, I created about 500 of each piece copied, and then I put it around town and, and tried to get it to people who maybe weren't going to art galleries um, and needed to still see art. So that was one of the projects I did. Um, so. it, it's, it's interesting. One of our previous podcast guests, uh, Joe Tugas, is the one who sure. kind of gave me the uh, pitch for this place in this episode. He said to check out your work, and he introduced me to you as an artist. Um, and you've mentioned it a few times here, um, how you got into art in your 30s and, you know, from that space. What was the inspiration that brought you there? And uh, what was your first work like versus what you're doing now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think being around creative people, um, the Coffee Hague was beautiful for me. Opening up, I got to meet some really cool people, musicians, artists, you know, and, and writers and so on. Um, and then realizing that I was, I wanted to create work. And so, um, good question. I, I wanted, some of my first work was very collage-like. Um, actually, to back up, I started taking some pottery classes. That's actually how I started getting into it. Did a little pottery um, vessels and stuff, and also some sculpture stuff. And then, because I, I was not a, a student at the university, but I could take a class here and there, um, and then started doing more 2D work, I guess, is what I started doing. And I still use a lot of writing in my work. Uh, I'm, I'm a mixed media artist, self-taught. And mixed media means I can just pick and choose what I want to use. Um, and because I, I am self-taught, there was no one telling me how I'm supposed to do it, which mm -hmm. can be maybe hard in the beginning, but it's totally an advantage because you don't have anything to relearn. Mm. So you just make work. Well, and with art, I think it's very much... Uh... Uh, the art, uh, the artist approach is something you can de develop on your own for sure. in a lot of cases. Yeah. Um, so having been an artist in this area for a while, 
Um, I'm wondering if you have any insights into like what being an artist in this area is like. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we do in our audience have a lot of aspiring artists and people who are trying to uh, do more. And I just wonder Mm -hmm. if you've got any kind of pitfalls or or opportunities that you see in the area, things like that. Um, I don't know. I don't have a whole lot of wisdom behind it, except keep creating, of course, and keep believing in what you're doing, even if it doesn't look like others work. Um, I think there's tons of good grant opportunities out there. Uh, don't, don't be afraid to ask people. I mean, come down here and look at the space and ask about opportunities. Uh, like you said, Jacob, I think if, if people want to help each other out, I think Mankato is a real good space to help each other out and um, encourage people to make work. I think the hard thing is um, whether you're a student who now has a degree in art and then you feel like you're supposed to be successful. Successful is hard when you're young because you see a certain way you're supposed to be in the world. I think if you keep making art, you're going to have a body of work and a ton of experiences as you go, but you won't realize that su- that's, that is success maybe right away. Um, so I think probably it's very hard. There's a, there's a few folks who can really make their money only doing their art, but there are a lot of people who add inside gigs and stuff to mm-hmm. keep, to continue on. Do you, you mentioned building like a body of work as an artist. Is sure. that something that you've either done yourself or, or planned to do or thought a lot about? Sure. No, that's a good, uh, Good question. I I feel like over time, um, whether it's in your studio space, you do have work. Um, uh, That's a good question. I'm a little stumped on that one. So um, I think there is a way to, I think your body of work is sort of your life's work, sort of, I Mm -hmm. guess I would say. Well, it inspired me to ask further because I had recently heard someone talking about how uh, the object or the goal of an artist is should be, I mean, there's a lot of good ones, but maybe one of the better ones is to like build a body of work that well represents the artist because it's Mm -hmm. one of the only things you can really do in any given moment is Mm -hmm. to like focus on that. Um, And it's something that you as the artist could uh, do and then track over time. For sure. And in some ways, I guess going, um, narrowing that down a bit, it would be Mm -hmm. like having your shows. So say you have Mm -hmm. a show once a year, every two years, that would be your body of work right then. Yeah. And then traditionally an artist will move on to uh, something else, some other, uh, keeping their work similar, but maybe being inspired by other events or other happenings. And mm-hmm. so, I, I think it's easy to look around or, or even to look at your recent history as an artist and be like, oh, I haven't done anything. Right. Or I haven't done, I, right. I'm not where I want to be, but uh, refocusing it on like uh, building a body of work and just becoming the kind of artist who has a body of work. That's right. The <laughs> it is easy to look at that. Yeah. And then life gets in the way, right? I mean, things mm-hmm. happen and um, you, you sort of drop out of the art world maybe for a while, but um, it's always there and you can always jump right back in it. And I think as creative people, mm-hmm. sometimes I'll just get an idea and I'll jot a sentence down um, or something, you know, I'll hear something and I'll jot some notes down. And But I think you're always in a sense, creating. And so this whole space for me was a creative process. And so when a person, somebody was asking, well, how are you going to pay the rent? And I'm like, well, I don't know. I'll just sell some stuff and people will come in and it'll just happen. But I have to be business smart, but also creative smart. And, um, it's so in, in a sense, this is, um, to me, uh, just a a creative business process right now, you know, Mm. so. Um, one thing you said earlier that, uh, off camera was the, about, uh, how you think this space would be awesome as like a space for people to discover things on their own rather to then have classes. Uh, do you think that's partially because of like your process of having to teach yourself, um, and things like that? I, I think it is. I think people were very, very willing to show me if I ask about a particular technique or, or how do you, um, layer something people were willing to show me and um and i did do, go to a few workshops and such but i i am hesitant to tell someone that this is the best way to do this i feel like um we we have to come in some people really do want to learn a specific a, a realism or something where they need to look at a tree and they want to draw that tree exactly like it is and that's really cool um, you do need to learn technique. It's not that. Um, but I believe we can all learn it, ask questions. Um, even down here, I have a whole bunch of how-to books um, that people have dropped off, um, how to draw, how to 
right, how to do watercolor. And so I think it's good to, to learn and be interesting in learning and asking for help and taking classes, you know, along the way. But, but I'm hesitant to, uh, to ask people to draw something like I do or paint something like I do. And so the idea of this space is you can try something and you blow it in your mind. Well, that's fine. You try it again or you try something else. So mm-hmm. it's a space where you can, exp- it's an experimental space, I think. I'd, yeah. I'd like, if I could jump in there, I'd like classes for um, trying out a way of doing things too. So sometimes it can be a good way to experiment with something that you wouldn't have done otherwise, even if it is different from like your process. Because I think as an artist, like really more of the, the practice comes from kind of like iterating the things that you're doing. Right. And a class is kind of different than that. Like a class yeah. is, is, a, is a condensed version of someone else's process so it can be like interesting to inform your own but right yeah i, I, like I mean your, it's both right and sometimes yeah. i'll look on youtube or something you know you, you watch things or you learn things but i think uh, i guess you want to be open to your own interpretation and and uh, yeah. trying things for yourself too yeah i think so. you almost said it best uh, i'm a self-taught musician and it's really comes down to like it's really nice to have someone to talk to and bounce ideas off for like specific techniques like if you specifically want to learn how to draw a circle for instance, right. or like do how does paper mache work rather than like what's your process for making a paper mache mm. sculpture. So uh, I think that's really where it is. But I love it as well. I like the idea of discovering something and then maybe learning on how to describe it or how to do some a couple things better after you've kind of already dove in a little Jumped bit. Jumped in, right. And you still have to learn if you're a guitar player, you have to learn a chord, you know, or whatever. Yeah. But, but then you can... And you can learn from others, but also do it your way. Yeah. 100%. I, I found it really useful um, in that same vein to just kind of like aggressively claim the term artist um, because like it, 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 it exists like doubting yourself in that way right. is completely antithetical to getting work done that progresses you in the direction. Yeah. And I, I, I was, I was guided in that direction. I, I mean, uh, Dana, she, she one, one time insisted with me, <laughs> she's like, yes, you are like, right. you know, own it. Like, and it, it is like, you know, everything I do is, you know, normally guided by creativity and like, I'm, it, it's the other stuff that I struggle with and it, it, it's moving forward in that way Sure. that like, I see a lot of like, like walking into this, this room, I was like, oh, this is, this is a really cool space for people who like want to have that kind of like you know creative like just what's next right that's what i hope you know i had a a woman in here i've known i bet you 25 years just in mankato area and um and she didn't she doesn't call herself an artist and i'm and i know her stuff and i know her work and finally she's starting to put it out there and and so um sometimes you just need someone to say you really are an artist and um and and that's a tricky word art for all you know i could call it craft for all whatever but I, I just think it's being creative, um, and, and I, uh, I am a believer that everyone is an artist in some area of their life. You know, they're very creative in some part of their life. Well, and early on, too, you mentioned that it can be useful for um, a lot of different things, even if it's just processing, like, right. life events, things yeah. you're going through. I think that um, the the focus and intentionality of, like, creating something like that is really special. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we've talked a little bit about art now. Um, what what is your what is your connection to poetry? It seems to be sure. it seems mm-hmm. to be integral to the space. Are you it a poet is. as Thank well? You for well, you know, I again, I don't. I, I should say I'm I'm a poet. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have put a couple zines out, um, uh, and one again when my spouse passed uh, at the year anniversary mark, I had been writing that whole year, so I put a zine out. Um, with some of my poetry in it, just that was part of my process to put it out in the world and honor her. But I do carry a lot of um, poetry books. And again, I'm trying to make them affordable, but there's nothing like, um, for me, I tend to do a lot of morning reading. I get up in the morning, I meditate, I read. And when I read something, even one line that really, uh, from a poet or from a a good writer of some sort that, um, a creative writer or something, it just really resonates with me. And, And so... So again, that's that's an area I'm not as maybe proficient or as confident in. But I, again, I think we're probably all poets. I mean, um, 
I, I do write some poetry. We'll have some poetry readings here in April. And I do think it's a different way. It's like, it's like creative work. It's a different way to look at yourself or your world or express yourself. And that's what we're all trying to do here. We're trying to figure out who we are, what our world's like, and how do I see it? And other people want to understand that. And we want to understand other people. So um, I, I put poetry very high on the list of important things, you know, to to continue to either read or write or listen to. Hmm. Yeah. Poetry does seem to be one of those, one of those things that maybe everyone does without knowing it. Sure. I think, uh, you know, anyone who's written in a journal or something could maybe be poetry adjacent at least. Yeah. <laughs> I read uh, a Bill Holm, who's a Minnesota, um, he's passed away now, but he's a pretty well-known Minnesota poet. And he was living in Iceland for a summer and, he said he would um, maybe go visit a friend or jump in their truck and go for a drive. And, and almost everybody in um, uh, Iceland wrote poetry, and they all published their own books. And so he'd have people just give them give them a, their poetry books and say, oh, this is what I wrote. And it wasn't like they were trying to be famous poets or, or um, say they were even on his same level, but everybody wrote poetry and everybody copied their poetry and passed it around. And I think that's, I wish we would do more of that. Yeah, so, that sounds special. It's yeah, beautiful. It, yeah, it does. I like that. Yeah. All right, friends. Oh, no, no, I don't want to commit on the podcast yeah, no. to giving all my friends <laughs> posting uh, you know, yeah, A lot of it probably happens on Twitter now, unfortunately, and <laughs> yeah. it's just not quite as beautiful. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's just something about it. Yeah. Maybe it's well, better hopefully there'll be more, yeah, more poetry being read and being, you yeah. know, pop-up poetry or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, so, it's yeah. awesome um, to go, go for it, Zach. You go ahead. Oh, okay. I was going to say it's re it's awesome to see spaces uh, pop up that that have a focus in those areas, like in art and showing people, just getting people exposure with things and poetry too. I think a lot of those things that um, that they kind of they they vanish out of spaces over time unless someone's like really intentionally bringing them back. Yeah, and giving them giving them yeah, space. Yeah, well said. Here, here. Yeah. Do you have a question, Zach? Uh, you actually basically said what I was going to say. Um, I guess I have another thing. So uh, just to pivot back to a little bit uh, what we're here for, what would you say to like someone who is thinking about checking out sidetracks or someone who uh, you would want to come in? Uh, I know we've talked a lot about artists, but this space clearly is for anyone when you walk in here. So yeah, I hope it is. I, intentionally, I've tried to be aware of... Um, you know, being aware of even class uh, issues or race issues or other things, I think we have to be so aware and be inviting everywhere we can be. And um, uh, that, and so I, there's always room to grow and room to change and, and changes to make. But if, if people could get in and take a look and see if there is something for, for them to use, and I truly mean it when I say it's art for all or it's a free public studio space, um, that it is important that people come in and just, and you might be shy at first, but I would say that um, once you're in, you're going to be pretty comfortable. And a lot of times there are people working in this space. And so they just scoot down and you pull in. And um, I don't think you have to call yourself an artist. Uh, and I don't think you have to know what you're doing, but you do have to be willing to give it a go and, and be a little adventurous mm -hmm. um, and, and give it a try. So. And there's also chocolate and stickers. And there's also chocolate. If all else fails, <laughs> there's chocolate and stickers. And there are knitting needles and there's crochet. And usually there's something that maybe you've done that you might be comfortable starting out with and then looking around. I was basically here for about five minutes before I asked if you were hiring. If that <laughs> tells true. anyone anything. <laughs> I, I felt invited. So he's first in line. <laughs> uh, what, um, I was going to ask about the, uh, oh, uh, there's a, so there's sort of an element of community art here and back here especially. Is that something that you've had uh, positive experiences with over the years? I have. You know, people at Michaela, you mentioned Dana at the 410 and the makerspace. I fully <laughs> support. Um, I know at Vagabond Village they're doing work. I mean, there's work happening all over town, really, in, in small groups and larger groups and businesses. And so, yeah, I've always felt uh, really supported um, uh, with my personal work and as an artist and um, people being willing to help with grants or reach out and um, just guide you in the right direction if you don't know what you want to do. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, I, we mentioned Joe Tugas earlier. I'll give him a little uh, shout out. He has purchased some of my work over the years, but recently he just um, purchased a poem and then he had me write it on his wall. So I think that's a pretty cool 
So he purchased a poem. He purchased a poem that I wrote on his wall. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll try to get a picture up of that. We mm-hmm. love Joe. I yeah. know Joe is a good su- <laughs> good supporter and a fun guy. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, the the this doing art around others is interesting. I think artists too can often can be really easy to uh, do it by yourself or in your own right. space or your closet or your basement or right. whatever else. So I think. Uh, to add to that too, just further opportunities to bump into other people and see what other people have going right. on, ask questions, just yeah, makes the makes the whole experience better. Yeah, you don't feel so alone and, and sometimes mm-hmm. so crazy that why am I doing this? <laughs> yeah, 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 it probably can help a little bit with the, the edges of the artist process. <laughs> cool. Um, anything else we want to uh, cover while we're here? Um, we covered the, we got the backspace here, the mm-hmm. artist, uh, the, what, are, what are we calling it? The free? The, this art, is the art for all space is what I call it. Space. Yeah. The sidetracked is the business. Um, everything's open, you know, during the normal hours, the art for all space is open and, and, you know, I've really, I'm, I've been open, I'm open to, um, people giving me suggestions down here. If people want to see something, I'm willing to try it. Um, and, uh. Yeah, I think it's a great place to, you know, to either donate items or come in and use items. And I, I hope it is for everyone, you know. Sure. Um, well, then let's do let's do plugs. Like, let's get the the hours and like when things are open, uh, just a, a good succinct version. And if anyone can find you online or. You can actually. There is a Facebook um, page. So you just go to Sidetrack Mankato and that should pop up. And it's a, a sidetracked is at 420 Park Lane, which is down towards Sibley Park. It's it's a little bit of an angle street right off Riverfront. So Riverfront and Park Lane. And the hours are Wednesday, f- Thursday, and Friday from 2 o'clock to 7 o'clock in the evening and Saturday 11 to 7. So I stay open a little bit later. I, you know, I feel like for me, I, I have a slow morning and then I get rolling hmm. into my art and my day. So it's awesome. Well, we're glad to uh, have you be a part of this community and excited to see what happens around here thank you i appreciate you coming down and and setting all this equipment up i know it was a lot of extra and but i appreciate that yeah thanks for i was gonna say for coming on the podcast but i should say appearing on the podcast (laughs) (laughs) and i'll thank you all yeah thank you for coming (laughs) all right